1994, three days of sightings across Zimbabwe culminated in what some believe is the most significant close encounter in modern history. Hundreds of people today phoned the ZBC and the BBC correspondent in Harare saying they sighted an unidentifying flying object last night. We have some eyewitness reports. It almost seemed to be under the clouds. As it came past, I noticed there's no noise, and that's when I thought, well, there's something very odd here. It was quite amazing. It was beautiful. They are saying that Jesus is passing through Africa. That's what they are saying. We interviewed about 64 children in front of the camera. The UFO story that happened. It's just say exactly what you want to say, okay. Well, I was running and playing and then I saw this maroon color in the sky. Why don't we follow it? We saw this like a silver thing down there. It was a silver oval thing that um, flew past really slowly. I saw the bigger one and the spaceship, like four or five of them. It was red, green, and yellow. There was this big ship. It had these lights, these patterns, and it flew. I thought, no, it's not a UFO. And then I looked carefully at it, and I thought, maybe. Dozens of children said that one or more of the disc-shaped objects landed just beyond the far edge of their playground. The next thing they knew, something was standing next to it. We saw him standing by the, by the silver thing, and he had big eyes. He had a big head and big black eyes and was dressed in a black bodysuit. They were wearing pure black. And I came down and I saw the funny man with his eyes here, and I saw a spaceship and there were a few little ones around it. How far away were you when you saw him? Uh, not very far, not very far, about a meter away. A meter away, that close? Yes. And how big was the figure? It was about as big as a grade six. Yeah, there! I believe that the children did see something. I believe them uh, because normally children don't lie. I've always taught my children seeing is believing. Unfortunately, I didn't see, so. This alleged encounter caught the attention of Pulitzer Prize winning Harvard psychiatrist Dr. John Mack. Seemed that he was looking at all of us. What, was that, what did it feel like when he was looking at you? Felt scared. It, it felt scared? What was scary about it? Well, it felt scared because I've never seen such a person like that before. And I saw this person, and it had big eyes. That's all I saw about it, big eyes. They had short legs and quite a long top. Mm-hmm. With a big head and eyes that are, are bigger than ours. How much bigger than ours? Four or five times the size. Four or five times the size of ours. So then I was looking at him, right? Yeah. Then he was looking at me back. How could I just keep on looking at him so I had to stop and I looked sideways? But I was looking straight into his eyes. Well, he never said anything. It's just that the face is the eyes. Maybe they're trying to communicate with us, show us something which we don't know about. I think they want, um people to know that we're actually making harm on this world and we mustn't get too technologed. We don't look after the planet and all the trees will just go down and and there will be no air and people will be dying. Is this an idea you have had before or did this idea come to you when you had this experience? When I had this experience. Mm -hmm. 
For the first time in nearly 20 years, the Ariel school children gathered from the four corners of the world to talk to each other about the experience they shared that September morning. I remember something there. One they all still struggle to understand. You know that it's moving, but you... I stand by what I saw. There was no reason for any of us to make that up. I've not spoken to anybody about it. Not because I'm not proud of it, but because I don't want the, the stigma. So it's something that I've had to deal with for 19 and a half years. I don't want to say I felt like I knew it, but I knew that I didn't have to be afraid of yeah. it. They took us back to the moment of contact. No, exactly how I felt, I felt exactly. So. The details still seared into memory. I was with one of the other girls and saying to her, this is amazing. We all were just stopped in our tracks. A little man appear on top of the actual craft. And that moment for me was very distinct because I was like, that's not human. Well, I was just completely engulfed in these eyes. The eyes. And in that moment, however long it was, because I have no idea of the time frame, it was just, it was mesmerizing. There was no talking. Um, it's all just images in the head. Telepathic communication. They were trying to communicate, trying to tell us something. It was something to do with the environment. I kept getting these thoughts and ideas in my mind of technology. Technology is not helping, technology is bad. And we're going down a wrong path and we have to start recognizing that what we're doing is detrimental and we need to make changes. And I don't know what to do with that or they were reaching out to us. It was as if they wanted us to go with them. At that moment, that was kind of when I snapped right out of the uh, trance. As soon as I broke contact, all of those feelings, technology, the bad, the horribleness that was happening and, and going around my body at the time went. It's making me a bit anxious being back here. I, I can feel it right now. Um, I, was, I was scared. They came running up here in such a panic, screaming, screaming, ah, and they were here, you know, and the child can't make that up. So I was there when they were interviewing them and saw the, the way they were. It was just a huge big mess and muddle up and just people everywhere. Just asked them questions straight off without explaining to the children what they were doing and why they were doing it. It was chaos in terms of the media frenzy that was going on and us being so young and not even being allowed time to comprehend what we had seen. Our teachers certainly didn't believe us, so that was a big deal, because we had to continue going to school there. We went back one last time to the Ariel School to meet with Judy Bates, a teacher at the time of the incident, and now the headmistress. Something was weighing on her that she wanted to tell the children. Yeah, I said I wanted to apologize. I, want, I should have taken more notice, but I didn't. I was more concerned about me and not them and what was going on in my own sort of experience. And that's what, yeah. And if you could summarize in just one sentence what took place September 1994 here at Ariel School, Rue Zimbabwe, what would you say? Aliens visited us. <laughs> and that's about it, yeah. And that's where if you believe it, you believe it. If you don't, well. We find ourselves confronted with something that challenges our very understanding of reality. We may be sharing this fragile blue-green oasis with an unknown other one with a mysterious relationship to humanity and its own interest in our world. And if you saw him again, what would you do? I'll ask him what is he doing on Earth and what does he want with us?